So today's lesson is going to be focused on two specific types of memory tools. And the reason why I wanted to focus on these two specific types of memory tools is that I really wanted to give you guys the various um, tips and tricks that are available to you in looking at how to apply memory. So we've been looking at the ways in which memory has scientifically been studied, but how can you use memory to your advantage? Because it's all well and good to understand how memory works, but don't you want the tools to put in your, your, your toolbox as to how you can use this to study? So these are two different methods in which you can use memory to your advantage. One is the memory palace. Now, often this is portrayed in popular culture by uh, individuals like Sherlock Holmes or the mentalist or various people that are known for re uh, recalling very uh, odd tidbits of really bizarre pieces of information or really random pieces of information, but lots of people use memory palaces to keep track of um, information, whether it's for tests, whether it's for uh, keeping track of uh, vital information for their day-to-day -day lives, whether it's for being able to study for their uh, work, work-related materials, or if it's just to be able to function within their, um, their, their family structure. They use memory, memory palaces to be able to keep track of information to protect things that they don't want to lose that otherwise they would they would be at a loss for for the rest of their their functioning and memory palaces are a really unique way of being able to retain that information now the concept of a memory palace is a little bit of a misnomer because you're essentially thinking of a place that has less to do with a palace and more to do with a place that you cherish, someplace that you care about a great deal. And that'll make more sense in the uh, video that corresponds with that. Please, please, please take your time and pay attention, okay? The other video is chunking. Now, you might have heard of this before, you might be pretty familiar with it because it's all in how we put together information to make it make sense. Think about the way in which we tell people information. Um, when we are telling someone something as simple as a phone number, we tell someone, oh, my number is... Three four seven five four three two five four five. We don't rattle off all nine numbers in a row because then we would sound like a lunatic. We tell all of the, the numbers in a certain sequence because we want the other person to hear them in a chunk. A chunk. A chunk and a chunk because then they're able to write it down, put it in their phone, 
in a way that makes sense. Otherwise, it would sound like complete nonsense. That's the same way that chunking works for your memory banks. And so that's the concept with which the chunking works in memory for other concepts, um, not just number retention, but also in the way in which we take in other uh, components of interaction. So those are your two assignments. Remember to look back towards the Jamboard, to look back towards uh, what other assignments in the Mindfulness Unit you need to be working on. And I'll see you next time. Have a great day.